Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Making sure y'all can hear me. And hey, Jennifer. Can you hear me and see me? Can you hear me and see me? I'm back in my favorite place. Just want to make sure I'm broadcasting before we get into it. Hey, SC, making sure y'all can hear and see me. Somebody say something to me. Tamika J. Marie. Yes. Okay. So it is Media Maverick Monday. It's Media Maverick Monday. It's Media Maverick Monday. It's Media Maverick Monday. It has been a minute, probably about three weeks since I went live because uh, between Serve the Media, oh yeah, you got your Noisemaker shirt. So between Serve the Media, my live event in Atlanta, and then the unexpected passing of one of my favorite uncles, my mom's only sibling, I have been out of pocket because I've been out of town and I just wasn't, you know, in the place to be thinking. So if you are new and listening or you happened across, happened across, happened across, happened across the replay, I am TJ Mercer. I am known as the chief noisemaker of Media Mavericks Academy and my sweet step. My sweet spot, my lane of genius is I teach authors, experts, coaches, and entrepreneurs how to book themselves in the media without a publicist and without being a celebrity. My, hey, Lamont. Uh, so as you can tell, I'm back in my spot where I'm comfortable. Uh, so listen, let's get into it. Let's get into it. The, uh-oh. Well done. Okay, so. If you have been living under a rock, you might have missed the social media. Thanks, Rhonda. I missed you in Atlanta. Uh, you might have missed um, the social media storm that set uh, was set off by Pastor John Gray. And he did a, uh, let me pull it up now. Uh, Chrome tab. Uh, there we go. Because I want to have it just in case you guys haven't seen it. Let me put this on the screen. Okay. So let me know if you guys see the freeze frame. Let me make me smaller. Yeah. Let me make sure if you make sure you let me know you see the freeze frame. But he had some folks big mad. Big, 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 big man. Now, let me let me put this out here. Whenever I talk about things um, that are happening in the media, I really couldn't care less what side of the issue you are on. My job as the media coach, as the chief noisemaker, is to equip you with the tools for you to make the most noise as possible about your business, your book, and your brand. So I don't, I have my own personal opinion about the clip, but let's be clear. That is not what this is about. It is not about my opinions on this. It is what I took from watching all the social media. So I'm going to play the clip for those of you who have not seen it. It's only 60 seconds because it's an Instagram clip. The wife that I chose is better than the man that I am. I married a woman two sizes too big. I have to grow into Aventure. She's a coat. I still can't fit her. She's bigger than me. And she's had to cover me while I grow up. I got to grow into her. But she's a covering. She's a covering, not a lid. Because if a man marries a lid, she'll stop your dream. But if you marry a covering, she'll push you to your destiny. Now, I'm about to shout. Tear this whole thing up. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Let me tell you something. My my wife has endured more pain birthing me than both of our children. She has sacrificed these last eight years uncovering the painful areas of my, my manhood and covering the areas that could have exposed me. She deserves anything I can give her. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I'm gonna live the rest of my life to honor her because 
she gave me what I couldn't give myself, which is a chance to heal while still seeing the God in me. The wife that I chose is okay. the man that I am. So, baby, folks went ziggly boom uh, over that clip. Let me go full frame. Folks went ziggly boom over that clip on, on both sides. I watched it on both sides, where especially when he was talking about uh, his wife, Aventer, birthing, having more uh, painful birth of birthing him into the man he is more than his two kids to the um, the comment about, you know, we, sh you know, women should not be mother 2.0. Then you have people who were saying, you know, the, the people who are making these comments, are y'all married? Because this is what marriage is. You're covering, y'all not understanding what he's saying. You, you bringing your own body. I mean, it was, I was like, woo, wee. folks are big mad over this. Now, Here's the tip, though, that I want you to get. I can't say all of it because I didn't watch all of them, but the majority of the commentary and the the either the written commentary, the video commentary, from a media perspective. Now, listen. Let me let me put this out. This caveat out there too. If you're not in interested in being in media as an expert, then this ain't for you. I don't really care what you're saying. Hey, Terrell, Alicia, Keon, Cosette, Kathy, I don't really care what you're putting out there. However, if you're sitting under my teaching and you're sitting under, you know, you're saying you paying attention and you picking up the nuggets that TJ drops. Don't you dare write a long commentary or do a long video that was based only on you watching the 60 second clip. I have yet to have time to go watch the full video in context, but I'm not talking about the content of the video. This news jack, I'm essentially news jacking this. So for those of you who don't know what news jacking is, let me just say, news jacking is the art of injecting yourself into a national conversation, international conversation of something of, that happened in a social media trend, a current event, and you're, you're news jacking, you're hijacking it for your, your, your brand, your, you're using your expertise. Hey, Alicia. Um, so, I didn't go back and watch the whole video because this, the whole context, this is because this is not what this particular news jacket is about. And plus, I didn't have time. But if you are going to be giving commentary, especially if you are relationship, you know, uh, a marriage counselor, a, ma a couples therapist, whatever you're speaking from, please do not just base your commentary on that 60 second clip. Because 60 seconds does not give the whole context. Like I'm watching some of the content commentary was like 15 and 20 minutes and all they were talking about, well, what was in the clip? And I'm sitting there going, did you go listen to the whole video? I'm not, I'm, I'm not, it, I'm not taking a side. I just want you, when you're out there talking about it, make sure you have the full context. And listen, that doesn't just go for Pastor John Gray. That goes for anything that you do. You have to go and listen to the whole thing because it will have you out here looking kind of cray cray and nobody is taking you seriously. If you're only, you know, it, because it triggers something in you or you don't necessarily like the, what he said and you have just formed this whole opinion on something that you didn't listen to what he said. So in the, I think the, the whole interview was probably like 15 or 20 minutes. If you're going to be out there talking about it, go listen to the 15 minutes. And because nowhere in the commentary or any of the videos that I listened to, I didn't listen to them all. But let me just put that out there. None of them talked about, you know, I went, they played this sex segment and then they decided to read him. Or they decided to uh, take his side. If you're going to do this, you've got to either put it out there like, listen, y'all, I went back and listened to the whole video and I still believe he was wrong or I don't believe in what he's saying. And I'm not about that struggle of I got I'll give you more respect if I know you went and listened to the whole thing. But if you're taking that is what the media does. 
That's what the media is known for. We're going to control the narrative or we're going to we're going to push the narrative that we want. How many times have you uh, even seen this happen where you listen, you know, everybody mad at a 15 or 20 second clip? And I'm pointing there because that's where my TV is. Uh, Lamont says, yeah, that applies to anything. Just don't retweet something. Don't just hit share. Research first. Exactly. I almost got caught up in that. I'm going to tell myself I almost got caught up in that uh, the other day. Because I did do the research and didn't come up with the correct answer. So there's this this um, Macy's ad that's going around that it's a four picture ad. And in the four picture ad, there's a, a black, a very light skinned black woman. It's a, they're in their pajamas. It's a holiday ad. Everybody's in their pajamas. It's different families. It's four different families. So we have a. Uh, a uh, husband and husband family. We have a white family that has kids with the mom and dad. We had um, uh, a single black mom with three boys. And then I forget what the fourth one was. But basically, social media blew up because there was no representation of the black, a black father with a black woman. And uh, social media blew up. Now, here's the thing. This has happened before. And it was just a matter of somebody taking a collage and putting these pictures together. And it didn't represent the full ad. I think it happened with Dove once. It, it's happened several times where someone has just put a collage together, put it out there. And it's like, OK, so they don't believe, you know, black families. Um, there's black families uh, out there. And so I spent the morning trying to find out if it was the whole ad. And so I found a, a montage that I thought was a whole ad. It had like eight pictures and there was a black one, a black mom and dad. And I thought it was the whole whole, you know, there was the whole ad. Turns out it was from 2017. And then more digging. Uh, one of my friends, Joseph, uh, showed me a screenshot where uh, Twitter showed the four picture ad. And Macy's was apologizing. So that turned out to be legit. But we've got to, if you are looking to do media, you've got to be responsible for what you put out there. Rhonda says that Macy's ad triggered a lot of people and there's so much more to it than those four picks. Yes, but in that aspect of what they took and put that together out there, Rhonda, that's what we ended up, because they ended up apologizing. I saw several news articles. They ended up apologizing. Hey, Michelle, uh, Yvette. Uh, Lamont says someone cut that up with Photoshop and misrepresented it that big time. Yes, that was what I originally thought until I did my homework. So the point, though, is regardless, we have to do our homework. We cannot be out there willy nilly putting stuff out there that is just a piece, a snippet, a small smidgen of the whole thing, especially if you're going to do a 15 or 20 minute video. You can do a 15 to 20 minute video based on a 60 second clip that is one part of a 15 minute video. So that's the first thing. Um, Yvette says, now I know what you do. So here I am. Oh, you that Yvette. Hi, Yvette. Yes, yes, yes. I met you uh, Friday. That's that Yvette. Okay, didn't connect, Yvette. Um, so yes, this is where I, you can usually find me every Monday at this time. Uh, Rhonda says, oh yeah, I see. I didn't see the retraction of the retraction. Yep. Yes, have to dig further on everything, says Rhonda. Yes, you and I spent Sunday like digging, like, okay, before we jump on this bandwagon, hey, Steve, before we jump on this bandwagon, can we just make sure that this Macy, because here's the thing that I think about, guys, and I was thinking about this earlier. Now that I'm in business and I'm having to manage back end systems, sales, customer service, problems, systems don't work. Things didn't get delivered. I have a lot more patience. Renee, what you doing over here? Mind your business. I just talked to you. Go away. Hi, Julia. Um, uh, I have a lot more patience and compassion for businesses. And I always think to myself, these people who put these, uh, go to Photoshop and put these collages together, would, if they were in business, would someone want would they want someone to erroneously tank what they've built? I don't care that Macy's is a multi-million dollar corporation. I don't really care. It still boils down to, for me, this is my opinion, what is right. And so before we jump on the bandwagon and tear somebody's body down, 
we need to make sure that we have all the facts to form the correct opinion, have the conversation. So that is my thing from the perspective of Pastor John Gray. Do not, I don't want to see any of you who learn from me out there giving whole conversations based on a 60 second segment, unless you tell me I watched the whole thing. Again, this has nothing to do with your opinion. I don't care what side of the track you are on. I don't, I don't care. That comes down to President 45. That comes down to President 44. That comes down to anybody. If you're going to form an opinion and put yourself out there as an expert about President Trump and something he says, make sure you're just not listening to a 30-second clip. Because I can tell you, and one of those videos, like now this is, good, you know, that, that, that um, web page, now this, I can tell you, especially when uh, Trump was running, that they would put together this montage and it would make him look really, really bad. You know, and I, my opinion of Trump, y'all know I don't really care for him. And my opinion of him started when I was working on his show. It has nothing necessarily to do with his, his presidency. But they now this will put together this montage and they pull snippets from President Trump, what he said. And then I would go and look at it in context. And it was like, that's not what he really meant. You know, I ain't saying that for everything. Like there are some things that I, he said, I'm like, OK, I, I just can't believe he said that. And I go and look. Oh, he actually did say that. And it was he said it in the context that it was shown. But for the most part. It is. I need to actually look at what he says in context. That is if you're going to be putting yourself out there because when media is looking at you and they're coming and looking through your social media page and which is what they do. One of my Mavericks, uh, Kendra, uh, got two interviews or something recently because somebody, they had booked her for speaking, but then they wanted, they looked at her social media, scanned her social media and saw that she covered other aspects. So. People are looking at your social media. Decision makers are looking at your social media. So you do not want inaccurate, off the handle information. I don't care if you're ranting. Get Don't get it twisted. I don't care if you're going off about it because opinions sell. I don't care about that. I just want to make sure it's based on facts and it's based on you looking at the entire context of what is said. And I'm sorry, doing a 15, 20 minute video without on a 60 second clip and you're not looking at the whole context of making sure he meant what he said, he didn't explain it any, even further, that it was the right thing. And even then sometimes you have to be careful because shows are edited in reality TV. Come on now, y'all know my background is in reality TV. I worked on The Bachelor, Swamp People, LA Hair, R&B Divas. Let me tell you something. I cut a scene for one show. I'm not gonna tell you what it was. I cut a scene for one show because I, we were pushing the narrative. We wanted the show to end a certain way. So I cut a scene for one show. Uh, I spent a week or so on this scene came in the next morning, baby, they were having legal meetings about the scene that I cut. Did I push the envelope too far? Can we get away with this? Is it really out of context? You, you know, cause a scene, we shooting a scene over the course of a uh, uh, few hours. So let's say an eight hour scene is going to turn into being maybe a two to three minute part of the whole show. OK, so they, I had to defend my decisions. I got called into the meeting like, OK, now listen, Teach, did this really happen or, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reflecting on that because they were like, you did your job too, too well. Um, so we need to we need to have a meeting about this because um, we need to know what does the raw footage look like. So when this airs. And the cast members are wanna, you know, say it was edited this way, or they were saying that didn't really happen. We can actually defend ourselves and go, yeah, it did happen. It may have happened out of order, but it doesn't change that you were getting busy in the tent with this dude. Y'all were burning zippers. <laughs> you know, is that an old term, burning zippers? <laughs> so um that's that. Okay, so that's the John Gray thing. Now. For those who this hit me to um, this hit me 
earlier last week, early last week, but I just didn't have the mental capacity with everything that was going on. I didn't have the mental capacity to send this out, but you can still do it. It was really, it, it's a news jack that's kind of more meant for Black Friday, uh, but it's kind of too late unless you have a, um, a relationship with the local uh, TV stations or whatnot, or even radio, you can do it this way. But definitely look at it for the course of coming up on the Christmas holidays and file this away uh, for you for uh, next Black Friday. But if you're living in a small town, Here's what I want you to do. And this is good. So if this is your brand, it's not everybody's brand. But if you're like a lifestyle a brand or um, a fashion, jewelry, uh, guru, here's what I want you to do. If you live in a, this will be better in a, sm a small city. I want you to go around to some of your local merchants. The people that are making things in your city that's you know exclusive to your city they may sail across the world but it's made right there in columbia south carolina and build like a top 10 list of the best buys that are or the best sales that highlight local merchants you build a top 10 list and you see if you can get those local small business owners to offer a discount if you get them if you get them featured on your local ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. You take that that list of ten and you pitch it uh, to the to your local stations and say, hey, you know the top five deals, the top five. If this was Black Friday, but you know coming up on Christmas, you can change it for Christmas too. The top five Black Friday deals of lo of our local businesses or something like that. Does that make sense? I don't think I'm explaining it well, but are y'all getting it? Are you getting what I'm saying? Um, are you getting what I'm saying? That you build, you know, you, you're using it to uh, highlight local, which is what your city would like. They, you know, they're going to gravitate to that first. And it positions you as an expert, the go-to person of a lifestyle brand or something like that. And they will like it because it's local, it's relevant, it serves the community. Um, it it um, It's just a cool segment and it's a demonstration segment. So you've seen them, you know, you see them kind of on Good Morning America, but they talk about, you know, the latest trends or something like that. Uh, Small Business Saturday, uh, yeah, would be good, but that's right behind um, it. The, the window for this year, that, that's a good point, Lamont. The window for this year is smaller because I was supposed to try to do this for y'all last week and I just couldn't because of all the, the stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, sm uh, small business Saturday. Thank you, Lamont, because that's really what I meant. Thank you for covering your TJ. Uh, but you want to do that as a pitch and you make it a demonstration segment. So you have it set up nicely that, you know, these soaps are handmade by uh, Lamont Wayne, who, you know, has been making these soaps right here in Columbia. I don't know where you are, Lamont, I forgot. Uh, right here in Columbia right now. And for the WNBC, the the KA, the KABC viewers uh, who, who use code such and such and such and such, then you'll get a discount. And then right here, these beautiful smelling handmade candles that make great stocking stuffers, or, you know, uh, Kathy makes these this great handmade jewelry that she, you know, she can find her normally every week at the local um, uh, farmer's market. But if you reach out to her on her website and use code XYZ, <laughs> <laughs> says, uh oh, I make soap in Colombia. That's all I can think about. But if you use XYZ, you'll get an extra 25% off for the next you know week or so. So however you do it, but just kind of start out with trying to gather a compilation of 10, and the station would may want to drill it down and select the best ones, or better yet. Like leading up to Christmas, they may like you make and pitch them to come on every week and give five. So like maybe three starting top of December, you can go and, and highlight five businesses, depending on you know how big your town is, five business businesses 
um, in one on one week, the next week you go back and do another five, the next week you can do another five. And that's building a rapport with the station. Now, that's only a fit if that's kind of in your brain. You you don't need to be uh, a um, an astronaut and deciding you're going to pitch this. Hey, t you okay, so because that that connection does not correlate. <laughs> but if you are a lifestyle blogger or something like that, there's certainly, you know, a deal finder, a couponer, you know, that will fit. If you teach, you know, couponing as a, a strategy, that would be a good compliment. But yeah, I don't, I don't think you need to be a astronaut pitching this segment. Um, yeah, Lamont, but businesses that tie in with what they do. Exactly. Exactly. So if you make candles, that still is something good for you because, you know, they may still allow you are a small business owner. So you can go on and talk about the business that makes the soaps, the businesses that makes the jewelry, the businesses that make uh, cute little handmade toys, whatever you want to highlight for your business. So that's one news, Jack. Another news, Jack, that it will be good because we're coming into the holiday season is uh, mental mental health. If you're in the mental health field, holidays are depressing for people. Uh, I think the statistics are astronomical of people who are committing suicide, you know, around the holidays and going into the new year. So you want to look at things that, you know, in your, your city that you can pitch of how to cope with, um, how to cope with, I didn't really, how come nobody told me that I had all that extra headroom? No, I wasn't even paying attention seeing myself. So y'all know I hate that. I can't believe this whole time I've been sitting there and all the extra hair room. Ain't nobody told me. Um, but you want to consider like, you know, strategies to cope with the holidays. Um, things that you 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 could do to fight the holiday blues. Let me see. What else was I thinking that are tied to the holidays? Weight loss, obviously. Uh, goals, resetting starting a business, all of those kind of things are hot topics depending on what market, what city you're in that can be used to pitch going into the new year. Um, let me think, what else? What else could be a holiday angle for you? Uh, decorating, obviously, if you, you know, tablescapes, decorating, you know, if you're a creative and you're into crafts, how to wrap the perfect gift. Um, last minute, you know, last minute shopping ideas, uh, things that you can do with the kiddos are going to be out of out of school. So if you're a parenting expert or, you know, child psychologist, things that you can do during the holidays with your kids being off to keep them entertained. You know, all kinds of things. The holidays are primed for you to look at where you can start pitching and newsjacking and inserting yourself into the media landscape. All right. Hope that helps. I'm glad to be back with y'all. Thanks for coming to play with me. I appreciate y'all. And if nothing else, we're going to count it down unless you got uh, questions for me in 10, 9, Eight. For those of you who like the aspect of TJ sharing her heart, I think I'm going to do a Tuesday with TJ tomorrow about three words. Yes, I'm needy that came up during my my uncle's funeral and the lesson um, that came out of that. So some of you who like the aspect of when I share my heart, uh, I'll do that maybe tomorrow. Uh, what was I? Seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. See y'all. Happy Thanksgiving. Eat a lot of turkey for me. Okay, bye.